Hello, hello friends, it's Meg and today I wanted to share with you my bullet journal setup. A few weeks ago I made a video on how to start a bullet journal. If you haven't checked that out, I'll link it up in the cards above so you can check it out. But that video was more of a tutorial and so I didn't really showcase how I personally use a bullet journal and so I wanted to create this video to show you an example of how I'm using the bullet journal method. So this is the notebook that I use for my bullet journal. This is a traveler's notebook cover in the regular size in the color blue. I have a little dragon charm on it because it's the year of the dragon, but also because I'm born on the year of the dragon. So it's kind of like my year, my animal. So I think a lot of people, when they think of a bullet journal, they think of this kind of bullet journal. This is a Leuchtturm 1917 notebook with some stickers on it. This used to be my bullet journal last year. This is kind of like the standard size that people use. It's an A5 size, but I decided that I wanted to use the Traveler's Notebook, which as you can tell is a little bit smaller than the Leuchtturm 1917 because I really wanted something that was a little bit more compact and the size actually was perfect for me. The main issue I had with the standard A5 size was that I felt like I was not using all of the horizontal real estate and it also took up a lot of space in my bag even though I wasn't fully utilizing the horizontal space and so that was my main complaint about this size. But when I thought about going a size smaller than this, it was just too small, I couldn't write anything. My handwriting isn't that big but it's not small either and so I just really couldn't fit much into a notebook if I went smaller than this size and so I was kind of like eh, I guess this is like the best that I could get but then I met the traveler's notebook which is vertically the same size as an A5 notebook but horizontally it's like half the size and this was perfect for me because then I could use all of the vertical space without having to waste any of the horizontal space and it fit a lot better in my bag. And another reason I chose this Traveler's Notebook system over the Leuchtturm Notebook was the fact that I could fit two notebooks in one cover. I don't know if you can tell, but there's two notebooks in here. And I really like that because around the time that I was looking for a new bullet journal, I started commonplace journaling, which I might make a video on separately in the future, but basically where you like take a bunch of notes on what you read, things that you, you know, consume and like brainstorm and stuff like that all into one notebook. And I started doing the commonplace journal in my Leuchtturm 1917, but I really wanted to separate between the bullet journal portion which had all of like my task management and stuff like that and the actual commonplacing and that meant I had to split the notebook in half and just start using the back side as my commonplace book and the front side as my bullet journal and that worked okay but it was just kind of clunky and awkward it was not a very elegant solution just because you know I couldn't predict how many pages I would need and splitting the book down the middle meant that I finished my commonplace section faster than my bullet journal and then like I was like okay then what do I do with my commonplacing because I don't want to carry around another notebook and so this was the better more elegant solution to that problem because I could fit two notebooks in one cover and so it felt like I was just carrying one notebook but in reality I was carrying two and because of the new way that I set up my bullet journal in my traveler's notebook I actually don't have my commonplace book in here anymore but I used to and so I would have the bullet journal and the commonplace in here together and then I would just carry it around take notes as I needed and because the inserts are easily interchangeable if I finished my bullet journal then I could just take that out and keep the commonplace book they were separate entities inside the same cover and so I could treat it as different things which was really nice but when I carried it around it was just one thing that I had to make sure to have with me which was great so those are the two main reasons I chose the traveler's notebook over like the classic Leuchtturm 1917 or any of the other a5 notebooks out there and <laughs> some downsides of choosing a traveler's notebook is the fact that this is not a very standard size and so it can be hard to find appropriate inserts outside of the Traveler's Company lineup and that could be a pro or con depending on how you look at it because on the one hand the Traveler's Notebook Company makes a lot of different inserts and so you really don't have to look outside of their like standard lineup in order to find what you're looking for like they have craft paper, grid paper, dot grid, lined paper, blank, you know like everything you can think of they 
have and so that's really nice but at the same time an issue I ran into with the Traveler's Notebook is that each of the inserts are pretty thin they only have 64 pages I think the biggest one has 128 pages but it uses like very very thin paper that ghosts like crazy and so the inserts themselves are pretty small which means that I will fill up the notebooks quicker than I would a Loistrom and so that was kind of a con for me because I write quite a bit in my notebook I think I use a whole page for my dailies and so that was kind of a con in that I wanted a notebook insert that had more pages in it but I just couldn't find this size just because it's not a very standard size so depending on what you're looking for depending on your needs this might not be the notebook for you but for me the pros definitely outweigh the cons and so that's why I chose the traveler's notebook and with the con I figured out a way to kind of circumnavigate that which is to use two notebooks instead of one for one bullet journal so I have one notebook that serves as like my long-term notebook which means it has all of my future log my monthly logs and any like long-term collections in them in one notebook and then the other one is purely for like brain dumps and daily spreads so the idea here is that I would keep the yearly notebook in there for the whole year and then I would interchange the other daily log notebook as I need and it is a little bit annoying that I have to use two separate notebooks but I think it actually works out to be a pro for me because I don't have to care about how much pages I'm using in my daily logs before I think I used to kind of you know limit myself to be like okay like if it doesn't fit into one page then I don't want to write it down but now that I know that I have have one that's like for more permanent usage and the other one that's you know for just writing everyday things I feel much more free to like write whatever I want and I feel much more liberated to use as many pages as I need now let's look at the notebooks themselves so these two are the notebook inserts that I'm using currently in my bullet journal this one is the yearly insert which means that it has my future log and my monthly logs as you can see the monthly log and this one over here this is labeled 01 because this is the first notebook of the year and this one just contains like my daily entries and because my notebooks contain a lot of personal information I can't do like a flip through or like a showcase of it exactly but I have this demo notebook right here that I can show you my setup in so this is kind of what the future log in my notebook looks like it's just the standard split the page into three and then write the months this one is a dummy one so it doesn't have any of the months written and then in the following pages i'll have each of the months for example like this january i do have the vertical monthly calendar like the original method but on the other side i don't have a master task list i actually have a reflection section because the master task list actually lives inside the other notebook where i do all of my daily task management in it just felt kind of strange to have a master task list in my yearly book when all of the work was happening inside the other notebook and so I wanted to keep this as a place to kind of collect long-term information and as you can see right here I keep track of my habits next to the vertical calendar layout the key for it is down here and on the bottom here I have a section for tracking my mood and now for the daily notebook I can show you how I set up the days so this is a good example page to show you for the daily notebook. I have a master task list on the first page where I just write out all of the tasks that I need to get done. And then I have a weeks page where I kind of roughly outline what kind of tasks I want to do what day of the week but I don't really use the weekly page that much it's just kind of there as a way for me to envision the week ahead and see what kind of things are coming up so it's more of a planning tool than it is like a tool that I use as I do the task and then the daily entries themselves look like this I have the date and the day of the week at the top I usually write the weather and the temperature as well just for fun and then I have the rapid log as you can see, I don't use the dot bullet as the task signifier. I actually use a box. This is because when I look through the pages that I'm done with, crossing out the bullet just makes it look a little bit messy for me. Whereas like a filled in square, like visually is very like, 
oh, it's done for me. And so it, it's much easier for me to differentiate between ta open tasks and closed tasks. So that's how I use my personal bullet journal. If you have any questions about how I use my bullet journal or if anything was unclear, leave them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer to the best of my abilities. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!